Good evening, guys. This will be our preteen Sunday school class. Um, I know last week we went over into the book of Samuel, and I began to think about this week where that we might go, and God led me over here to Second Peter chapter 2, so we're going to study in that this week, and um, I don't know if I'll be able to get uh, exactly to the point that I want to be able to get to in this scripture, um, but if we can't, we'll we'll go back and, and do the rest of it, but we're going to be starting in in second or second peter chapter two we're going to be starting at the 10th verse and i want to get through um the rest of this chapter um, but like i said don't know that we'll be able to get through it um, but we'll get to starting here second peter chapter two verse ten it says but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government presumptuous are they self-willed they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities and this this chapter to catch us kind of up to this verse 10 it's talking about false prophets and, and false teachers and basically people who uh, say they're of God but they're really not and they're going about teaching the things that that they want to teach and, and believe in what they want to believe instead of what God's word says and, and what God says to their very heart. Um, and he's, Peter here, he starts to describe these people. In these other verses here, he uh, references over to the Old Testament. And, and, and here in, in this verse, he starts to explain what they're doing down through these other verses as well but he says that they walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government they they do what they want to and anybody that would tell them that they're doing wrong well they despise that they don't want to hear that uh, they, they believe they're right and they feel like they are and in, in this day of time that we live in you can see that everywhere that you look but what I'm focusing on is the spiritual man that's inside of you when God tells you that, that you're doing wrong uh, can you despise God for telling you that but no you should listen to what God has to say and if he's told you you're doing wrong uh, you need to change from that and, and follow after what God told you to do to begin with and he says presumptuous are they self-willed they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities so the people basically who would have the rule over them they have no respect of them and they are not afraid to say evil things about these people people that we're supposed to have respect for and i, I believe mankind ought to respect one another and, and so as the bible says to love thy neighbor as thyself I believe respect would, would go along with that part of the scripture because if we don't respect one another uh, how can we ever be a help to one another um, but if we talk evil of one another uh, all that's going to do is, is bring more problems it will never uh, fix anything it says in 11 whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not relin accusation against them before the lord so he's saying here these angels they ain't speaking evil of everybody so if angels that are are greater than we are stronger than we are if they're not doing it before god and they're up in heaven with god then then why should these people be doing it well the answer is they shouldn't and, and that's how he's showing us here in this verse he says in 12 but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed he says speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and this day and time we live in you hear this all the time 
And what I mean by that is if somebody uh, does not understand something, they, they treat it as that's evil and that's, that's wrong, even though they don't understand it to begin with. And uh, I, I begin to go back and read a little bit down here about in verse 15. Uh, it starts to talk about Balaam, uh, and you can find him over in the book of Numbers. But when you begin to read that story, he doesn't seem so bad. You know, it, it doesn't seem like uh, he's getting paid all kinds of money. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like he's a bad person. It, it just kind of seems like he's uh, portrayed in a good way when you go back and read that. And and I would advise you to. It's, uh, you can find it over in the book of Numbers, uh, chapter 22, and it'll talk about Blom. But here... In 13, he says, And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to ride in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. So, when I read this verse, and we'll talk about it more, but I see a counterfeit is what I see. I see somebody who looks like the real thing who, who talks like the real thing uh, but they really don't have it and and that's just like if, if I had a hundred dollar bill and, and it looked just like any other hundred dollar bill that was a real one but it was fake it, it really wouldn't be worth anything and there's people here that, that go to church and that are that are good people who, who don't even know who God really is. They're more worried about uh, what some man thinks about them or, or worried about, uh, you know, how they look, their appearance, but they're not worried about on the inside. And he's, of course, here talking about false prophets and teachers. But when I, I think about them, I, I think it probably started as they, they wanted to please man, man more than they wanted to please God, and they didn't actually search out what God wanted to begin with. But he says they're going to receive their reward. It's, it's going to come for them. They haven't discerned the Lord Jesus Christ uh, versus their flesh. He says they count it pleasure to ride in the daytime says spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you this sporting themselves and with their own deceivings they're enjoying their their own deceivings they're enjoying the condition that they're in and you know if you're out of church and and you're not concerned with your, your Christian life with your spiritual man if you're concerned with all the worldly things and concerned with what people think about you and the pleasures of this world well you're going to enjoy the things of the world ain't you and, and that's kind of part of it um, if we're not careful uh, a little sin will turn into more and more and more sin as time goes on uh, a lot of times we like to say well you know that's not so bad you know it, it, we'll call it something like that like i said a little sin but the truth is sin is sin okay god doesn't see one sin bigger than the other sin is just sin um so will say well that's not so bad I can do that and Lord I, I'll ask for forgiveness of that to me uh, we can read about that and, and we can go and look at that but that's willful sin right there you've, you've thought about it you've realized it's wrong but yet you're going to do it anyway you're having pleasure in, in your sin and, and I, I think about that uh, I thought about it the other night and, and kind of uh, that's how this scripture got on my heart 
Um, but in front of me, I seen sin. And I thought just like that. Well, that's not so bad. You know, that's not really uh, that wrong. You know, we try to justify these things in our mind. And I sit there for a minute and I thought about it. And I thought, well, you know what? I had to think about that an awful long time to decide whether it was sin or whether it wasn't. So I better just leave it alone. And that's what I did. And I'm not talking good about myself, but I am talking good about my spirit because my spirit knows the Lord. And if I listen to God's spirit, communicate with my spirit, and I'll be in the right condition, then I can discern when, when things are, are, not, are not right. And, and that all kind of goes back to being in the right condition. If you're not in the right condition, then ask God to forgive you. Ask for help. And, I mean, if you can't pray for yourself, how can you pray for, for somebody else? Well, you surely can't. But first, fix yourself. And then uh, you can help somebody else. But... These sins that come upon us, and I, I'll say it like this. It, it, we can go back and we can look in the book of Genesis and we can find uh, Cain and Abel. And Cain, of course, he got mad because uh, God had respect to Abel's offering. His offering was better, sacrifice there. But he had respect to Abel's offering and not to Cain's offering. And Cain got mad at that. And God took the time to talk to Cain and tell him, he said, sin lies at the door. So he warned Cain, right? He warned him that if he wasn't careful, uh, sin was going to come upon him. Of course, we, we know what happened. He ends, Cain ends up killing Abel, and, and there you see the sin. But what I'm saying is God warned him beforehand. And if we'll listen to that warning, you know, man, we'll save ourselves a lot of trouble. And we can stay in that right condition. You know, I'm not saying I don't mess up. I make mistakes all the time. But as I talked about in one of these other videos about Paul, uh, where he's telling Timothy to, to fight the good fight of faith. Um, we have to try. We have to strive. It's it's not enough to just uh, go through life and, and give God just a little bit of effort. You know, it's an everyday thing. Like I said uh, about sin in front of me the other night. Um, if I wasn't in the right condition... I could have got out of fellowship with God. And you know what? I don't want to do that. Because I don't know the time that it'll be in my life when somebody needs to hear about Jesus Christ from me. And it's not just because I'm a preacher. We talk to people in our everyday lives, day in and day out. We talk to them. And if you're not in the right condition, then how will you be able to tell them about Jesus Christ? How will you be able to actually show that you have the Spirit inside of you? I want people to know. Uh, if I die tonight, I want to know I'm born again. I want to know. I want to know I'm saved. I want them to know my testimony. So uh, I'll tell you. We'll, we'll we'll have to leave off here for tonight. I'm running out of time. Uh, but be aware of yourself. Examine yourself and make sure that you're really in the right condition you need to be in to do the work of God. I love you. God bless you.